Hello again. Thank you for being here. It's because of you why my channel is growing at a lovely steady pace and I'm really, really grateful for that. And this video is all about showing you how I test a lawnmower if I suspect that the stop system is somehow at fault. Maybe the lawnmower's not starting or it's starting but not running for very long. But in any case, if we do suspect that it's the stop start electrical system, then we can do this test. And so at the very least, it will either tell us it is the problem or it will eliminate the fact that we thought it was the problem and we can look elsewhere for the problem. And this test is all about focusing in on what I consider to be quite a common cause, the stop wire. So I need to be clear that this is not the only cause, it's just what this video is all about. So then, how does this all relate to engine failures? Well, quite a common cause can be down to the kill wire itself. Because if there's any breakage in the wire or outer insulation damage, allowing the centre core that carries all that electron flow to contact the engine block, then all of those electrons are going to take that quickest route to ground, rather than through the spark plug. And of course when this happens, we call it a short in the stop wire. And that's of course if the short is between the coil and the stop switch, because if it's lower than the stop switch, then it's just another grounding, it's not a problem. And a quick and simple way to test to see if it is the kill wire that's actually shorting on the block is to just disconnect the kill wire. It's important that the kill wire is disconnected at the coil, rather than the other end at the switch. Because disconnecting it from the coil will eliminate any possible shortage or breakages in the wire that are touching the block along the whole length of the kill wire. Disconnecting it from the switch might not be sufficient to detect a problem along the length of the wire from the coil to the switch. It could still be shorting out on the engine block somewhere between those two points. So if we go ahead and remove the kill wire from the coil, and then the engine starts, then you can pretty much guarantee that the kill wire was shorting into the engine block somewhere between the coil and the switch. But assuming that there's no problem with the kill wire itself, it can't be ruled out that the switch and the earthing mechanisms involved in the switch aren't somehow faulty and they are causing the short. So in other words, it's just earthing out when it shouldn't be, but it's more likely to be the kill wire. The trouble disconnecting the kill wire now though is that we can't just stop the engine that easily because of the fact that we've just removed an important part of the stop mechanism, the stop wire. So there's now the case of trying to pull off the spark plug cap or something like that to stop the engine, either that or refit the kill wire. But I personally don't like to do this because of the safety implications in doing so because if we pull off the spark plug cap then there's a likelihood that we'll get an electric shock and it can damage the ignition coil in the process. And also, let's remember that if we are refitting the kill wire, then we're doing so with an engine that's running and we've got no guard protecting us from the turning flywheel. Although I do know lots of people who do it this way, I personally would rather not. So what I've actually done in the past is use a multimeter. Because using a multimeter, in my opinion, is a much safer way of doing it because you don't even have to start the engine and have all the safety issues to deal with whilst doing so. They are pretty cheap nowadays, you can get them for around £10. So this is the process that I use to test for the short. So I take my multimeter and I turn the dial switch at the front to this setting. This is the continuity setting and I'll explain a little bit more about this in just a moment. But for now, just make sure that the switch is pointing to this symbol. And then we've got the multimeters, positive and negative probes. The black probe is the negative probe. And for this particular test, the negative probe's plug must be plugged in to the socket that says COM. And then for the red probe, which is the positive, its plug must be plugged into this socket. This stands for volts, ohms and milliamps. So then, how does this all relate to me wanting to use this multimeter to test if there's a short in the kill wire? Well, the best way to show that is to go through the actual procedure. But before doing so, in order to gain a firm understanding, 
I'll show what's going on under normal working conditions before the OPC lever has even been pressed or it's been let go of, so it's in the off position. Thanks to the help of the multimeter, this is a really good test to see if the stop system is actually working. And the best of it is, we don't even have to start the engine. So again, making sure that we're on the continuity setting. There are two main ways we can test using this multimeter to see if there is a short in the kill wire. So firstly, if the kill wire hasn't been removed from the coil and the flywheel cover or the recoil housing hasn't been removed, then we can test for shorts at the switch because we can expose the switch much quicker and easier and simpler than removing the recoil housing. But like in this instance, if we already have the flywheel cover off and the ignition coil exposed like this, which is something I would rather do personally so I can have a quick look round the components inside there before I do the test. Although like I've said it's not the only way or necessarily the quickest way of doing it. But I find it a more thorough way of doing it and it only takes a few minutes more than just testing at the switch. So then we can test it in the following way. We place the negative probe into the back of the kill wire connector where it connects to the ignition coil. You can see that the bolts that hold this coil in place have been removed and this coil is actually loose, but you don't need to loosen the coil on yours. I've only loosened the coil for the benefit of me taking the video. You'll notice that I haven't actually had to remove this connector because the metal tip of the probe is touching the metal spade connector behind this white plastic cover. And now that's in place and the lever is released, allowing the switch to spring back and create a direct contact, the multimeter now sends its small current of electron flow up into the negative probe and the metal spade connector before continuing through the kill wire to the back of the engine and to the switch. And because the switch is in its sprung back position, then the kill wire has direct contact to earth. And so the electron flow continues out of the kill wire through into the engine body. So just to make a point that the electron flow goes into the engine body, I've just put these highlighted dots there. But what we do now, of course, is take the multimeter's positive probe and then we touch it on the engine body. And because the engine body has that flow of negatively charged electrons, they're attracted to the positive probe of the multimeter. And so they flow that way, down the probe, through the wire and back to the multimeter, where the signal is read and the buzzer activates. And so as we know, this is showing continuity, an unbroken route for those electrons to move from the negative side of the multimeter through the stop wire and the stop switch, through the engine body and then back into the positive side of the multimeter. And it also shows that the stop system is earthing out when it should be. So if the engine was running, it would transfer them electrons away from the spark plug into the engine body. And that's exactly what we'd need it to do if we needed to stop the engine. But we've managed to do this test without even starting the engine. So using the multimeter, what we can do now is test to see if the stop mechanism is disengaging to allow the engine to start. And again we can do this test without actually trying to start the engine. We use the multimeter in exactly the same way of course, the only difference being is we make sure that the OPC lever is pressed to allow the stop switch to disengage. So then with the OPC lever pressed and the negative probe in exactly the same place as it was before, Electrons then flow out of the multimeter just the same, and then on through the kill wire to the stop switch. And what the electrons would like to do is flow up the kill wire and down this route and across to earth. But of course they can't now because the stop switch is working and it's been rotated away from the kill wire mechanism, creating a gap between the two. Too much of a gap for the electrons to arc across, and so this acts as a break in the circuit and of course electrons can't go any further. That means there's no electron flow stimulation in the engine body, so when we touch the positive probe to the engine body, then we're not getting any electron flow going down into the positive probe and back to the multimeter. Therefore, there's no continuity of current here, so there's not going to be any buzzer sounded. 
And that's exactly what we want when we press the OPC lever. We don't want them electrons going to ground, to the engine body. Because when the OPC lever's in this position, it's the start and run position, we want them electrons to go to the spark plug. OK, so I've done some explaining of what happens when the OPC lever is in the start and the stop position. And so let's have a look now then at how this relates to testing the mechanism if the mechanism has a fault in there stopping the engine from running when we want it to run. Well, again, for this little test, we need to make sure that the OPC lever is in the on position to make sure that we've got that gap in the switch to prevent the electrons passing to the engine body. Then at least we know there isn't some kind of mechanical fault from the lever down through the cable and on the rotating mechanism that it operates. And so when we're sure that everything's mechanically OK, how does the multimeter now test to see if everything's OK electrically with the starting system? Well, what simply happens here is that the multimeter sends out its current of electron flow up through the negative probe and into the kill wire. But instead of going to the back of the lawnmower to the switch, if there's a short in the kill wire, the charge is going to go so far down the kill wire, but it's going to sense ground way before it gets to the switch. And so at that particular point where there's damage to the kill wire, where it's touching the engine block, those negatively charged electrons within the kill wire are going to be attracted to the more positively charged engine body that the core of the kill wire is now touching. And so all of those electrons are going to fall short of the switch and just flow out of the wire and enter the engine body. And that means, of course, that the engine body is in a similar situation to how it was before the OPC lever was pressed, when there was a direct link from the kill wire to the engine body. In the same sort of way, there's a direct link now in an unnatural place. And so the engine body has these electrons flowing through it. And so when we touch the engine body with the positive probe, then we're going to get the buzzer activated because we've completed that circuit of continuity. So in a nutshell, if the OPC lever is pressed and we do this test and the buzzer activates, then it's likely that we do have a short in the stop system, predominantly in the stop wire. Now this may sound a little complicated to remember, but you don't have to because I've put together a free printable leaflet that you can find on my website in the link below in the description, which will show you how to do this step by step. So I really appreciate you watching this through to the end, and if you have any comments to further this, then please do comment below, I'd love to hear them. In the meantime, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.